Hello. Are you considering making a move to a foreign country? Well, stay tuned because moving abroad alone long term may not be right for you if. <laughs> Hello, my name is Patricia Brooks and I help women who are interested in making a move abroad find the confidence and courage to stop living a life that's not meant for them in a country that's no longer meant for them and move to one that better fits their needs. And I've been living in France for seven years now, and it's been an incredible experience, but not without its ups and downs. And in this video, I want to share with you seven things that you need to think about before you make a move abroad so that your chances of living there and living there long term happily are raised for you. All right. So we're going to dig in now. The first one is moving abroad alone long term might not be right for you if you have been romanticizing the country or the city that you want to move to. Now, I speak to a lot of people who aren't really sure of where or if their reason to want to move to a foreign country is enough to make it something that is sustainable. And I often hear them say, uh, maybe I'm just romanticizing this. I've been wanting to move abroad since I was 10 or since I was 12. And I've been watching movies and it just seems so lovely. And if you are romanticizing the place, and that means that you are, that you have an unrealistic vision of that place and what that will mean for your life, then maybe you're romanticizing it. And you might want to delve into if you're thinking that, oh, once I move to Paris or once I move to Porto or once I move to Berlin, then I'll be happy. You might want to dig down a little bit deeper because you might be running from something and towards something that you've romanticized that could never live up. And that could be a recipe for disappointment. So that's number one. Number two is closely related to what I just spoke about in if you are running from something. So if you have unresolved issues that you think will be made better by living in a foreign country, uh, I think you're probably going to be sorely disappointed and actually see how moving to a foreign country can compound the challenges that you face. Because if you are going through some things and you have unresolved issues, perhaps you're in a relationship that you think will improve if you're living in a different place, or maybe you've got some unresolved emotional issues that you think really the cure is being in a different location, you can get to that place and then find out how much of a challenge and how much harder it is to actually work through the issues when everything is new and different and foreign and maybe you're experiencing homesickness or whatever to compound things. So for example, I did an interview on my podcast with a woman who moved to Belgium and she was in a, a marriage that wasn't really going that well, it wasn't that strong, but she thought, well, I think maybe this move to Belgium will help our marriage. And so she moved to Belgium thinking that that would help her relationship, her marriage, and the marriage dissolved. So that is not a cure. So number two is if you have unresolved issues, whether they're emotional issues or whether they're relationship issues, if you think that moving to a foreign country will solve them, will fix them, right? Because perhaps what you're looking to do is distance yourself from somebody that's that potentially could help. But if it's trying to fix the relationship, then you might want to reconsider. Moving abroad long term might not be right for you if you have trouble dealing with uncertainty and waiting. All right. When you move abroad, there are so many things that are unknown to you. And so even if you've gone through your checklist and you've done everything that you need to do, when you get to your foreign country, there are going to be things that are unexpected. And how to deal with them, how to work through them is going to 
be done in a way that you might not be familiar with. And that's going to rub against what you're used to, what's normal for you. And if you are anchored in needing certainty, if you're anchored in needing set time frames or things to start on time, you're going to struggle and it's going to be hard. And if you want to stay in a place long term, working to get to a place where you can handle uncertainty more easily and handling waiting and delays and slower pace of life, then that is necessary in order for you to be ready to really embrace a new life abroad and and enjoy the experience because moving abroad should be a pleasant experience. There, There are going to be challenges. There are going to be ups and downs. But overall, you're moving abroad because you want to be happy. But if you've got this resistance to uncertainty and to waiting, that's something that might set you up for failure staying long term. Now, the reason I moved abroad was because I wanted to learn the French language. I wanted to become fluent in French. And that was the draw for me. So I was highly motivated to learn French. But if you have no desire to learn the language of the country you're going to, if you're going to a country that speaks a foreign language, and you're not going to put any effort into getting to at least a basic level so that you can communicate and make your life more pleasant and easy, your day-to-day life more pleasant and easy, then moving abroad alone might not be for you. Now, there are people who live here in France who don't speak French and they're not trying to, and they may be getting along well. And I can't attest to that. For me, I know that even at the level of French that I'm at, it can still sometimes be very challenging to get my point across. I was in my Spanish class and I was trying to explain something that I didn't think was so difficult. And I explained it for three or four minutes. And, you know, one of the eight or nine people around the table understood what I was saying. And finally, I just said in English what I wanted to say because it was so frustrating that, number one, I couldn't get them to understand what I was saying. I think I was pretty clear in French, but I think beyond the language, there was just a cultural difference. And so not having a base, at least a base of the language, can really, really make things harder for you. And so staying in a place where you don't speak the language long term can pose really big challenges that can be isolating. So if that's the case for you, find a way for you to want to discover the language. I think a lot of times people want to move abroad because they want to experience a new culture. And language is a big piece of that culture. So if that is something that you're telling yourself, but yet you don't really want to learn the language, question that motive of learning a new culture and being immersed in a new culture. All right. So that is another reason. So if you're looking to improve your French skills and you enjoy watching TV series or movies or international news programs, and you'd like to do that in French so that you can improve your comprehension and your ability to speak French, French Channel has given me a promo code that will give you 15% off either a monthly or annual subscription. And French Channel is the number one streaming service for all things French. They have the largest library of documentaries and TV shows for children and series and movies that you can access at the click of a mouse. And the programming is really high quality. That's what I thoroughly enjoy about it. So if you think that learning French and watching shows in French is something that can move your language learning to the next level, then be sure to check out French Channel and use promo code PATRICIA15 to get your discount. All right. So that's that's my spiel on learning the language. I think it's so important to do it. Find a motivation to do it. 
find a way to believe that it's possible for you. And something as simple as watching French programming can help to increase your level of French. All right. Now, moving abroad is not for you if you are someone who is set in your ways. If things have to be done a certain way, if you see things as black or white, things are right or wrong, you probably will bang your head up against the wall in a new country because things are going to be different and things are going to be done differently. And if you are so set in those ways and you're not going to be able to be flexible, then something's got to give, right? They say that a tree that is limber and it moves in the wind is less likely to break than a tree that is dry and brittle and resistant because the wind can just crack it, right? And that is something that is true with stepping into a new culture. If you are not flexible and open and willing to see things in a different light, see things in a different way, it's going to be hard. And staying in that country long term might be a challenge for you. All these things are really meant to make your transition into a foreign country easier. And so if you are aware that you have some of these things and you still think that you want to move abroad, you can actually do things to improve how flexible and open you are. You can do things to improve your ability to deal with uncertainty. And that's exactly what I do. I help people to shift their mindsets and be more open and flexible so that in preparation for a move abroad, they are changing before they have to change. And so once they're in that situation, they're already able to experience the beauty of a new life in France or in whatever country they're moving to. All right. So I, I, this is just so invaluable. And I think people don't give it enough attention, which is why I'm doing this video. Reason number six is if you are not committed to putting in the time, two years, maybe three years to put down roots and make a go of living in a foreign country long term, then moving abroad is probably not for you because Things take time to materialize. Making new friends takes time to materialize. Getting to a level of proficiency with the language takes time. And if you give it three months or six months and you say, oh, I don't have any friends here or I can't speak the language, I can't communicate, then you really haven't given yourself a chance or done your move abroad justice because it takes time. For me, I am starting my seventh year here, and I would say probably in year two was when I started to really connect with a couple of people, you know, not hundreds of people, a couple of people who I felt I could count on. And so two years into a new life takes a lot of stamina and a lot of ability to be alone with myself. And I think one of the things that helps that is getting to a place where you truly like yourself because in liking yourself, you can be on your own and move through this period more easily. Even if you are moving abroad with family members, there are moments when you're going to feel all alone. And if you don't like yourself, that's going to be a very challenging place for you to be. So if you're not committed to giving, giving a move abroad at least two years to see things materialize for you in terms of friendships, in terms of language, in terms of feeling connected, then moving abroad probably isn't for you. And it could be even longer. I coached a woman who recently said to me, she said, you know what? I don't feel like myself when I'm here. And it's not that she doesn't love living in France. She absolutely does. But the person that she was when she was living in the United States, the person who could really advocate for herself or joke around or really debate is not showing up so much because even though she has a very good command of the French language, there is an element of her personality she feels is lagging behind. And so to 
be able to handle that and deal with that when you are in a place that is foreign to you and you feel like you're losing a part of yourself can be hard. So it can take even longer than two years, but give yourself at least the two years so that you can see if the move abroad was the thing for you. So you can allow things to happen and show up and take root for you so that you can then continue on should you choose to or say, you know what, I gave this a really good college try and I think this isn't for me, which is okay too. All right. And the final thing that if you don't have this, if you don't know this, that moving abroad long term might not be for you is if you don't know your why, why it is you want to turn your life upside down so completely to move to this country that is going to be different and pose lots of challenges, then moving abroad might not be for you. And even beyond knowing your deeper why, not because, oh, the food is good or it's it's a beautiful country, but deeper than that, why is that so important to you? Um, and then what will living in that country allow you to do, have, be, or become? If you don't have that why, the deeper why, and the vision of yourself and your life, when you get there, really dialed in, then you might struggle because you might get to this place you've been dreaming of for a long time. And the things that you are sacrificing and the things that feel harder, feel harder because you don't have that guiding principle or that guiding why for you to push through them. If you get to that foreign country and you, like me, three weeks in was like, oh crap, what have I done? I quit my job. I don't know anybody here. Was this so smart? And I've got all of the time in the world to think. And I didn't have my next project because my project was getting to France. I felt scared. And so knowing what your vision for your life once you get here looks and feels like, and what are those things that you're going to do to fill your time and make sure it's an enjoyable time for you, then you can find yourself in the tug of war that I was in and battling that. And I did that for a good seven, eight or nine months during that first year. And it didn't feel good, but I, I moved through it because I had a why to learn French. I had a why to write my second book. And those were deep enough at the time. I think that I have some much, much deeper whys now that I've uncovered as I've, um, I'm putting the finishing touches on my third book, but it's, it's not easy to, you know, uproot your life and move to a foreign country. So I think these seven things are things that you really need to consider and look at and see where maybe you're deficient because just because you're deficient in one or two of these doesn't necessarily mean that moving abroad isn't something that you can do later on. I highly recommend working on them so that as you're planning your move abroad, even you can strengthen them and have a better transition to a smoother, happier life in your new country. All right. So those are seven things that if you don't have or haven't strengthened, might pose challenges for a sustainable life in a foreign country. Let me know which one of those was the most surprising to you. Now, as I said earlier, this is the thing I do. I help people work through issues such as this, issues such as not being good with uncertainty, issues such as being set in your ways, but really wanting to change your life and working through that and learning to become more flexible and open. Figuring out ways, creative ways for you to learn the language and feel motivated to learn a language. These are all things that I work with people on. So if that sounds like something that you could use help on and that could move your move abroad plans and dreams further, then let's have a conversation. Check out the link to my calendar in the description, thecouragecatalyst.com forward slash future expat. And we can talk about where it is you are, what you're struggling with, and if our working together makes sense. All right. So hopefully you found this video enjoyable thought-provoking, insightful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.